Thank you, Mr. Stoltz. Uh, the chair now recognizes himself for five minutes for, for questions. Um, listen, I think we're all on the same page. We want to make sure that uh, Americans are incentivized to save for their retirements. We want to make sure they get good advice, uh, that they invest well, and they're able to pick uh, products uh, and services that best meet their needs. Uh, I got to tell you, I've been in this town for four and a half years, and, and uh, bureaucrats who sit in uh, really fine offices and buildings don't always know what's best or what families consider in Spencer, Wisconsin, or in Wausau, Wisconsin, or Hayward, Wisconsin. Um, and I think to have the opportunity to get good advice uh, should be um, made by the individual investor. Uh, we've heard claims, uh, not to bring up Obamacare, but I will, that if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. If you like your health insurance plan, you can keep your health insurance plan. And so too, if you like your financial advisor and your financial plans, you can keep those as well after this rule. Both of them, all of them are wrong. Um, what concerns me the most with the way this rule is crafted is that if you are wealthy, if you have a fat account, um, you're going to get great advice. You're going to be the one who can find professional help in how you invest to get the best return on your investment. But if you're a lower income um, or smaller saver, this rule isn't going to allow you to get professional advice. You're going to be now relegated to robo-advisors. I'm stuck with my computer, putting in random data um, and let the computer print out what the computer through algorithm, algorithms thinks is best for me. Uh, Ms. McNeely, in the last month, you've seen the markets uh, swing um, like the rest of us have. By chance, did you get more calls in the last month than you have in previous months? Generally, I do. Um, however, I have found that if I uh, do proper planning with my clients, we have protected them from that downside with the use of annuities. But yes, absolutely, when the market fluctuates, they call me, we talk through it, we calm them down, and they move forward. When people see a, a large downturn in the market, sometimes do they become afraid and, and want to sell? Without question. And do you think that's the best thing for your clients to do? It's the exact wrong time to be selling, sir. And you're able to counsel them through that, right? I actually call it uh, telling them not to jump off the bridge. So yes, we do counsel them through it. I would have to argue that talking to a financial advisor in these downturns as opposed to getting a, a text through your robo-advisor on your computer um, is far more soothing and probably offers a little better advice and sounder long-term strategic planning, yes? Absolutely, and specifically because I know their entire situation. Uh, we've spent countless hours talking through their specific issues, and so I know them personally and can give them much better advice. What happens to your clients um, if this Department of Labor rule goes through? Do they still, um, in the same capacity, get to access your advice, do you think? Well, as it's written right now, my, my feeling is, is that likely I would not be able to work with a large number of my clients because I do have a very small asset base with a lot of my clients. They're new savers. So it will pr likely preclude me from working with them because I'll be subject to some asset base limits. We, yeah, we don't come from a very wealthy area, do we? No, sir. All serves. Yes, I would agree with that. Uh, Mr. Stevens, um, I was intrigued by the analysis that you all have done in regard to the true cost of this proposal. Um, the cost isn't a $17 billion cost. It's uh, much higher than that if this rule was to go through. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chairman. And, and, uh, and I think we've, we've spread this analysis on the record uh, in comment letters, uh, in testimony up here on the Hill and, in, and uh, to the general public. And what I would say to you is that no one, no supporter of this proposal has yet to come to the ICI and say, here's why your numbers are wrong. That includes the people of the Department of Labor who have been working on the bill, as well as the academics whose studies the Department of Labor was relying upon. So if we have got this wrong, we'd like to know, but no one's challenged our numbers yet, and I think they're exactly right, because the Labor Department process was deeply flawed. So what are, what are the biggest flaws of their analysis, and what are the biggest numbers that they missed, in your opinion? Well, um, uh, first of all, as, as I say, they, they predicated the whole thing on studies that were out of date. How old? Depicting a market that doesn't exist anymore, one that's typical of 10, 15, or 20 years ago. In fact, that's one of the critiques I would have with Professor Bullard's analysis as well. You know, the, the truth is, over the past 10 years, virtually every penny that's gone into a mutual fund has gone into a no-load fund. In fact, the 
funds that have sales charges associated with them, front end sales charges, which is the subject of what the Department of Labor talks about, have had outflows, very substantial ones, for all of the past five years. On average, for those funds that actually do have a load, and that's a small part of the market now, what an investor paid is 0.9 percent as a sales charge on a hybrid fund or a stock fund, that's the average, and on a bond fund, 0.7 percent. So there's not this vast disparity. There's not these huge costs embedded here. All of this is publicly available information that the Labor Department didn't take into account. Uh, the, the costs have not gone up in recent years. They've actually gone down, I think. Oh, it's gone point. down. The and cost of fund investing in 401k I, funds has gone down I, per I, generation. i got to interrupt you. I was, I was going to try to run a tight gavel, which I talked to the ranking member about. We have a lot of witnesses today, and I've violated the first rule by going over by 40 seconds. I apologize. Um, the chair now recognizes.